What happens when the walls come crashing down and a company is thrown into a crisis? How does a company rise from the ashes and not just survive, but thrive in the aftermath of a crisis? And how does ethical leadership play a role in crisis management? These are thought-provoking questions that test the mettle of any organization, large or small, in the face of adversity. Imagine a situation where the company in question is a world-renowned giant in the healthcare sector. This isn't just any company, it's Johnson & Johnson, a name synonymous with trust, quality, and care. A name that resonates with millions of worldwide. In the early 1980s, this potent symbol of trust was rocked by a crisis of catastrophic proportions. The crisis was so severe that it could have easily obliterated Johnson & Johnson's brand and reputation. It began with a chilling incident in the city of Chicago. Seven people lost their lives after ingesting Tylenol capsules. However, these were not the usual capsules. They were laced with a deadly substance, cyanide. The fallout from this unfortunate incident was far-reaching and threatened to bring the company to its knees. However, Johnson & Johnson's response to this crisis has since become a standard in crisis management. Their handling of the crisis was not only exemplary, but also demonstrated their commitment to leadership. Their first priority was never their profit margins or stock prices. Instead, they focused on the safety of the public, their most valued stakeholders. The company quickly took decisive action. They pulled a staggering 31 million bottles of Tylenol off the shelves. The financial implication of this move was enormous. It amounted to a loss of over $100 million. Yet they didn't flinch. The safety of the public was paramount and they wouldn't compromise on it. The CEO didn't shy away from facing the public. He appeared in television ads and at news conferences informing the public of the company's actions. The company's message was clear and consistent. Our consumers is our priority. Open, honest communication became a hallmark of their crisis management. They engaged in transparent interactions with their stakeholders, leaving no room for speculation or rumors. But Johnson & Johnson didn't stop at just pulling the tainted products the shelves. They sought to restore public trust in the brand and took further steps to ensure consumer safety. They developed tamper-resistant packaging to prevent any such incidents in the future. They also offered replacements for all purchased Tylenol capsules, another massive financial undertaking. But for Johnson & Johnson, it was a small price to pay for restoring consumer trust and confidence in their brand. In addition to these direct actions, they also launched an extensive public relations campaign to inform the public of the protective measures they were taking. The campaign was comprehensive and meticulously planned. It covered every possible communication channel to reach out to the public and reassure them of Johnson & Johnson's commitment to their safety. It was a masterclass in ethical leadership. The company put the safety of the public before their profits. They were transparent in their actions and communication, and they took responsibility for the crisis, even though they not at fault. They demonstrated that a company's true worth is not measured in its profits, but in how it handles adversity and protects its stakeholders. Johnson & Johnson showcased the principles of systems thinking, knowledge slash data management, and research methodologies in their crisis management. They took a structured, analytical approach to the crisis. They identified the root causes, evaluated the possible repercussions, and developed a multi-pronged strategy to manage the crisis. Their approach was rooted in ethics and values-based leadership theories and principles. They prioritized the welfare of the public and took action that were in line with their corporate social responsibility. Their crisis and risk management strategies were effective and efficient. Johnson & Johnson assessed the risks and opportunities that could affect their business performance and found solutions that met the needs of both the organization and its stakeholders in a responsible and ethical way. So what can we learn from Johnson & Johnson's handling of the Tylenol crisis? Firstly, always put the safety and welfare of the public first. This not only is the ethical thing to do, but it also helps to maintain or restore public trust. Secondly, be transparent in your communication. Let people know what you are doing and why you are doing it. Thirdly, take responsibility. Even if the crisis is not your fault, take charge of the situation and do what needs to be done to resolve it. Lastly, use the crisis as an opportunity to improve. 
Johnson & Johnson used the crisis to develop tamper-resistant packaging, which became an industry standard. Remember, a crisis can be a defining moment for a company. It can either lead to its downfall or be an opportunity for it to demonstrate its values, strengthen its reputation and emerge stronger than before. The choice is yours.